I read a lot of procedures that say, well, you know what, Will, why don't we just uh, ring the police and the police will deal with it. Hello, I'm Will. And what I do is I talk a lot around staff safety. And also what I get is on a weekly basis, I get questions. And what I have to do is select certain questions that I can make short videos about. And I do it across all the sectors that we work within, whether it's from retail to hospitality to housing and care. We do a lot of government work and obviously transport and other sectors uh, that are too many to mention. And what I've done this week is I decided to make a video on a sensitive subject of eviction in the hospitality. And because I've had a lot of questions from that, even internationally, believe it or not, not uh, from a lot of our new clients that we teach via virtual on okay we've got a guest uh, we've got somebody in the restaurant we've got somebody in the bar how do we effectively evict them well I say to him there's no real clear line or routine even though people will say this you do a b c d it doesn't really work like that if you think about it what it actually works like is you've got to say to yourself, right, okay, then what is my establishment like? Is it a hotel? What type of hotel? If it's a bar, what type of bar? If it's a, if it's a restaurant, what, what, what type of establishment is it? What type of clientele do you actually have? And therefore, that what before you do anything, I talk a lot about boundaries. So what does the guest actually have to do or the actual customer have to do to basically come under the bracket of an eviction because an eviction is a very serious thing because it can result in any form of compensation claims or it can result in any form of assault and there is a degree of risk of even damage to the property so we need to sit and discuss okay what are our boundaries what what does that actual person have to do for us to turn around to each other and go well, you know what this is an eviction then once we get that established that's when we start on the procedures now procedures, whew, they've always got a bad rap, and you hear a lot of people uh, complain about types of procedures. I review a lot of procedures, I write procedures, I go carry out risk assessments, and I'm always telling the client we need to keep them as realistic, and as what I joke a lot about, even on previous videos, aerodynamic, because if you make them too detailed, people won't read them, but if you make them understandable, and they actually are, shall we say, direct towards that staff member's actions, the staff member will read them and comply with them, because that's what they're there for. Then I talk a lot about, okay, right, so when we've got an individual that's refusing to leave, whether it's in a hotel or a hospitality, shall we say, establishment, okay then, how are we going to do that initial approach? Yes, I've, I've dealt with a client recently um, that owns a very large chain, was talking to me about, well, sure, well, my bouncers can just remove them. Okay, well, what I point out the door staff, which I prefer, and two, they're professionals, irrespective of what people will comment on, but they are because they're qualified, and their job is to, shall we say, control the situation. So do we give a warning? Um, how do we give a warning? Like, for instance, in the, my hotel groups I work with, and I say to them, well, okay, then do we call them? First, do we send a manager up with, a, obviously, a witness? How do we approach that initial warning within that establishment? If we're working in a bar or a club, a restaurant, how again do we do the approach? Do we go up? Do we go up with one person, two persons? We don't want to be intimidating because that can escalate the situation. What do we actually do? How do we actually warn the person that if their actions continue the way they are, that they're unfortunately going to be asked to leave the premises? And, and that's something that's very important. Going in and just dragging somebody out or getting into, shall we say, some form of physical contact doesn't always work it's, it's a situation that can evolve and a lot of professionals i know in this game from head doorman to uh, general managers to to owners don't want that which is good so then you got to sit back and think to yourself right okay let's say this individual is refusing to comply whether they're doing some form of antisocial behavior or they're just their actions are making shall we say the customers or guests uncomfortable how are we going to escort them out of the premises how are we going to get them off the premises um, uh, m uh, a lot of organisations, inclusive of the Security Industry Authority, are training door staff more on physical intervention. I'm trained on it. But again, it's still the point of it only takes you to a certain key level of physical contact. Again, you might have a higher degree of staff that aren't trained in physical contact, but how to remove them. I read a lot of procedures that say, well, you know what, Will? Why don't we just uh, ring the police and the police will deal with it?
No, we'll leave that one for you to think a little bit more. It doesn't work like that. I mean, you're going to ring the police, say, I've got someone in the bar, I've got someone in the hotel, they're not complying, they're not complying, and they're going to rush around. It doesn't work in that context, in realism. And I know a lot of experienced people in the, in the hospitality will be nodding now going, yeah, if they don't come straight away. And that's because they have other commitments. Once we've established that, so we've understood, shall we say, the escort and how we're going to get them off, that's where training comes in, which is one of the most important things. How do we train our staff to all comply with the procedures of the organisation? How do we say, this is what you do in the event of an eviction? This is how you approach the person. If they don't comply, this is what you do. And that's what you sit down and you discuss with all your staff, inclusive of talking a lot about boundaries. What are the boundaries that the person crosses? And then the most important thing, which I always say, if we have to unfortunately evict somebody from our premises, whether it's that, like I said, that restaurant, that bar, that club, or that hotel, the most important thing is reporting and recording it, is logging that down. Because that person might go to a solicitor, go to some form of, shall we say, organization like the police and complain about you. And if you haven't got the evidence to say, this is why we did it, all I'm saying is, from experience, there could be complications. Eviction is a last resort. Nobody in hospitality wants to do it. A lot of organisations treat it as a taboo subject, but it is something that you should seriously consider if you have a concern. Thank you for watching. Please continue to keep giving us the questions. Follow us on our LinkedIn uh, Quell training page or our YouTube channel. We have a Twitter account which has all the links to go to certain videos when they're all released. Take care, whatever you're doing, and bye for now.